technologically advanced, but has had its citizens' individuality removed. The autonomy of its citizens allows for the totalitarian government to abuse human rights and civil liberties of its citizens. Often featured government media control and propaganda. Um, so this is stuff where our government feeds us information that they want us to hear. Unethical human experimentation for the greater good. While not featured in Fahrenheit 451, this is featured in other science fiction dystopia such as Firefly, Serenity, The Matrix. Um, can't think of anything else right now, but those pretty much cover it. Uh, uniform, houses, clothing, foods, etc. Um, and extreme punishment for breaking the rules. So when you do something that's a little bit out of line, such as reading a book, you get pretty severely punished. We want to be rebels anymore. This is one of my favourite quotes from the books, um, and we will touch on it a little bit later, but it really covers the fact that very few people want to stand up and protest and be heard and really question the people in power. Society is where the ideal world that the leaders have built turns in on itself and becomes a nightmare. So where we see a utopia become dystopia. Um, it's caused by immense oppression of the citizens and of the society which leads to rebellion, uprising and revolution. Individuality and free thinking is often interpreted by the leaders as outward rebellion. The leaders and government will try to cut off the spread of perceived defiance. So we see, we see this through the reading of books, that books are the gateway to free thought and that that's the ultimate defiance. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury is political correctness and censorship gone mad. To avoid conflict of opinions, books become censored until ultimately they were banned. Firemen search people's homes and property, burning any books they find. Um, on touching on the, the searching of homes and properties, this is so routine that people think nothing of it. Um, whether permission has been granted or not. If someone, if a fireman wants to look through your bag, you don't object. Um, and in the movie, which was released in 1966, it's really well shown when they start just in a, uh, in a park, just ripping through people's stuff, throwing people's stuff everywhere just to try and find these books. Uh, Montag, who is a firefighter, he starts to question the role he plays and his life's meaning after meeting Clarissa. Clarissa is by nature inquisitive. She loves books. She doesn't, um, she's really innocent and she doesn't see what's wrong with a really good book. Montag's wife, Mildred, is an example of the empty perfect citizen. She watches TV. She cooks dinner for her husband. She does everything that's right in the world. Um, and the government doesn't really care about her happiness. They just care that she's compliant. Ray Bradbury and the Assault on Free Thought is a journal um, which discusses freedom of speech and that, that, and that freedom of speech cannot be contained or oppressed. It must be absolute. Um, you can't just have a little bit of freedom of speech. It's... Um, it either is or it isn't. There is no in between. Um, that some people want to be told what is right and wrong, mostly to avoid conflict, and that that is perfectly okay as well. You do get people who want to abstain from arguments. They don't want to have an opinion. Um, you still need to give them the right to express an opinion, but if their opinion is no comment, you need to respect that as well, um, which is something that people forget. Um, in our society, people are just as entitled to not use their right of freedom of speech as they are to use it. Conflict is needed in the world to move forward. Passionate debate and conflicting views are the privilege of a free society. This is something we often forget. You know, when we're debating what we're going to have for dinner, we forget 
that there are some people in the world who don't get a choice and would be thankful for anything that gets put in front of them. Um, and this is something that we need to remind ourselves of. This is a privilege of being in the society that we live in today. And that's something that Ray Bradbury, through his fiction, he fought for. Um, that the population can be sedated and medicated into acceptance. Um, and this is in Fahrenheit, this is quite literal being that they take stimulants and sedatives or what are commonly known as uppers and downers um, to get through their day. So while it's quite normal for someone to sit there and read a book and fall asleep with that book on their chest, um, this society lacks that. So sleeping pills are a must. Um, and that sameness creates a perfect society. So not people being equal and having equal rights, that's not what creates a perfect society, but rather that it's people being the same height, the same weight, the same everything. Everyone gets married at the same time. Everyone has the same amount of children. Everyone's house is the same square footage. That is what creates a perfect society. For everyone to be happy is for everyone to be equal. And when again, we're not talking about equality of rights. We're talking about sameness. There's a difference. Um, this is a big issue that's covered in the book. And at first, it's really, really hard to see it. And then once it's pointed out to you, you go, oh, my gosh, censorship. Yes. So Fahrenheit 451 has censorship as a device to remove conflict. So if you're not allowed to talk about something, um, then it won't be a conflict. Conflict is created through opposing ideas or views of the world. This isn't just an opinion in the book. This is actually fact. That's what conflict is. Um, it's two people having opposing views and then fighting over it whether that fights with words or whether it starts a war that's a totally different thing philosophical thought is compared to each season's new fashion now this um quote i can't remember if it was in the book i don't remember reading it but i did see it when watching the movie and i just thought it was a really interesting thing um an interesting way of twisting philosophy from being something that's individual and unique and there's lots of different philosophers with lots of different opinions um it gets that gets twisted by the captain into being that it's frivolous and unnecessary just like the new fashions a new summer dress censorship was the first step in the book towards oppression um and my next point is, if writers can't write what they want, then readers, then can readers read what they want to read? Because there's already a limited option. And then what's the point of it all? So if, a writer, if writers aren't free to write whatever they want, if they're censored, then the readers are automatically censored. Um, and what's the point? If you're going to censorship, if you're going to censor something, you might as well not have it. Evil. Uh, Bradbury had the view that society would become placated by watching endless amounts of television, which to an extent has come true. Um, he also was aware that the brainwashing abilities of TV, if government censored and oppressed, uh, what could be shown on TV. So this comes down to propaganda again. You know, if the government controls what's being played, then there is a certain amount of brainwashing that can happen. Uh, people would stop experiencing things for themselves in preference of watching it on TV. Another thing that's really, really true, um, you do see it a lot where people go, I don't need to travel the world because I've watched, you know, um, I've watched American TV, I've watched a French cooking show, therefore I never need to go to France. Um, Television is also an easy way to suggest ideas and thoughts for the general population, decreasing individuality. So again, um, we see this with a lot of culture, especially nowadays when something goes viral. Um, dabbing is a really terrible example, but that went viral and that became a part of um, a certain age group's culture. And so it was, it's maybe not brainwashing, but we're getting close. We can see how if we flood the media with something or we censor something, how it either becomes a big part of our society or it becomes removed completely. 
uh, this is my last real point. Um, and I put a cute little gif in there because I like that teddy bear. Um, <laughs> defiance from a citizen can be as simple as questioning the status quo. Um, this is really important in science fiction dystopia where we see uh, often our hero or heroine may simply ask a question and that's what fires off everything that's going on around them. Um, again, we come back to that quote, so few want to be rebels anymore, um, is a commentary on how easily society is placated and spoon fed. Um, rebellion is rarely violent, but becomes so when it conflicts openly with oppressive leaders. So it's almost never the rebels who are violent. They just want an answer to a question. They just want to know what's going on. But the oppressive leaders and the oppressive government react violently because they feel threatened. Why aren't I allowed to ask questions? That's usually the next thing. There's usually the question of, why can't I read a book? Why aren't I allowed to ask that question? what's going on and the question of why aren't I allowed to ask questions is usually what spurs on a story <laughs> in science fiction dystopia. I'm going to stop there because I'm up to 11 minutes. How long is it since you were really bothered about something important, about something real? I'm ending on this quote because I think it's a really important one. Um, if it wasn't so long, I'd probably get a tattoo of it. But how long is it since you were really bothered? Same-sex marriage um, is something that really bothers us in society, uh, whether you're for it or against it, and this is a good thing. We should be bothered by it. We should be questioning all sides of the argument, and we should be making sure that our governments are doing the right thing for us. I think if Ray Bradbury was still alive now, he'd uh, really enjoy the fiery debate and the use of social media and television for both sides of the debate to have their say. My bibliography, thank you for listening. Um, and I just want to have a little shout out to Matt Maharan, who did the drawings artwork. Um, everything else is kind of um, self-credited and watermarked, but I need to give credit to the drones art, which came from the news album Drones, which was released in 2015. Thank you for listening and yeah, good stuff. Go science fiction.